All right, we're at the hour. So hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be dispelling some of the common myths that are held around connected TV advertising. And we're excited to have our longtime partner, the Trade Desk, with us. We're being joined by Charlie Batcher today. He's going to walk us through how we can unlock the power of connected TV advertising. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Erin Martin, the VP of Marketing at NetSertive. We have an action-packed 30 minutes of content for you guys, so we're going to jump right in. Um, and quick reminder, we always send out the deck and the recording after these. Um, we're not quite sure if we're going to get uh, time at the end for questions, but we would love to answer anything that comes up. So feel free to pop those into the Q&A window um, or always email us at the end and we can circle back to get those answered as well. And a quick note about NetSertive before we jump in. We're a digital marketing partner to over 100 franchise and multi-location brand partners. We use our own proprietary technology to help execute and optimize the thousands of moving parts and pieces that are required to run a successful localized marketing program. We absolutely love what we do. So if you want to geek out on digital marketing, definitely hit us up after. Or like I said, if there's anything related to CTV and programmatic advertising, we'd be happy to discuss as well. So with that, I'll jump into the agenda real quick before kicking it over um, to Charlie, who's going to give us an intro on connected TV and programmatic advertising. And then we're going to jump into dispelling three of the common myths that we hear specifically around CTV. The first being that it's costly. The second, that local, tar local targeting simply equates to geotargeting. And then finally, that a medium like CTV is only used for brand awareness. And then I have a quick example um, of all of this in action to take us on home. So with that, Charlie, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, as as Aaron mentioned, my name is Charlie Betcher. I work on the inventory team at the Trade Desk, uh, focused specifically on connected TV publisher partnerships. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Trade Desk, uh, we're an independent media buying platform that helps marketers reach consumers through relevant ad experiences. You may simply know us as an independent DSP. Uh, and while our teams at the Trade Desk spend a lot of time thinking about and working with the buy side, the advertisers themselves, uh, my team focuses on publisher partnerships and really aims to create as much connectivity as possible between the buy and sell side. Um, so as Aaron stated, we're going to spend our time today talking about connected TV um, and really how, how marketers can unlock the full power of this platform. Uh, I think Many of us know that the CTV is one of the most powerful delivery mechanisms for advertising and media today. But, you know, I hear this on my uh, day to day. There are, are still plenty of myths and, and misunderstandings surrounding the platform. So we'll focus on those few uh, core points that, that Aaron mentioned already. Um, and uh, let's jump into it. I, I think, you know, before we get into demystifying uh, some of those some of those key areas, um, in any presentation I always give, I like to start with the why and what. Um, basically, why are we talking about CTV and programmatic advertising? And what kind of opportunities does this unlock for the marketer? Uh, and even to take a step back further, um, let's define what CTV is, because I want us all to be on the same page. And while CTV has been around for a long time, many buyers and sellers use different terms, and this can create confusion in the market. Uh, connected TV is, is simply premium television content delivered to the largest screen in the house through a connection to the internet. Um, it's a subset of over the top uh, OTT as it's known, which many people use interchangeably with CTV. Uh, but for the trade desk and a lot of uh, media companies, OTT really encompasses any device that you can watch premium content. Um, as long as it's delivered via uh, digital and an internet connection. Um, so that could be desktop, it could be mobile. We're focusing on the connected TV today. Uh, and connected TV can be delivered through a variety of devices. So there are subsets uh, within connected TV as well. There are smart TVs, 
you have your Roku's, Amazon Fires, you have gaming systems, et cetera. Um, but regardless of how it's delivered, uh, the connection to the internet is really what's most important as that connection is what allows buyer and seller to uh, watch premium content, but then also have digital capabilities to match. Uh, traditionally, consumers viewed publisher content, um, some that you see on this screen, uh, through traditional cable subscriptions. And the way advertisers would access, access that traditionally is by partnering with those publishers directly through IOs or insertion orders to place those ads. But platforms like the Trade Desk uh, have been able to bring those deals, that inventory and that strategy together to run via automated technology. Um, one thing before we shift to the next slide that I always like to point out to, to teams as I'm taking them through this slide is that if you are evaluating connected TV or speaking to uh, the device manufacturers, the, the content owners, any of the people in the, in the chain here, essentially, be direct and, and ask the questions uh, that that you need to get answered in order to make sure that you are able to have the greatest impact with with your buying. Uh, while they may seem like basic questions, simply asking a publisher or a content owner how they define CTV, what devices will you run on if you buy CTV, what type of content sets are available on CTV, those can be extremely beneficial and provide you clarity since there can be miscommunication when you're you're dealing with so many links in the chain here. Moving to the next slide, um, why does programmatic matter when it comes to connected TV? Uh, so again, just to level set, when we say programmatic advertising, all we are really talking about is the process of buying and selling digital advertising in an automated fashion. Uh, and when you look at programmatic today as a way for buyers and sellers to transact on ad inventory, spend is rising sharply compared to traditional ways of buying ad space. As I mentioned, those insertion orders uh, and this is especially true on connected TV. In 2023, programmatic will account for over 85% of connected TV ad spend. And part of the reason that programmatic is rising so quickly versus traditional buying and selling of media is that there are tangible benefits to buying programmatically and working with ad tech platforms versus, again, those traditional ways of buying via insertion orders. So we'll talk about a lot of those benefits today, but on the next slide, what you'll see is a quick summary of some of the core reasons why buyers and sellers are shifting rapidly to connected TV and programmatic as a way to transact there. First one, transparency. So programmatic CTV allows uh, buyers to understand where your ads are running and uncover insights. Efficiency, uh, you can reach more of your target audience and reduce oversaturation with things like frequency management. Outcomes, you can connect CTV to any outcome. Uh, which is one of the myths we will dive into specifically. CTV is not just for brand awareness and insights in real time, uh, which really, really speaks to the heart of automation um, and, and programmatic. You can optimize campaigns mid-flight to drive performance and have real-time results that impact how you're going to your future planning and buying. So now that we've talked about the what and why, uh, let's start to unpack and discuss some of the myths of CTV. Uh, and the first one we want to touch on today is that CTV is costly and hard to get into. Uh, and again, in order to properly address this one, I do want to take a little bit of a step back and, and start with the marketplace and the consumer experience. Because as many of you are aware, there has been and continues to be massive shift in the ways in which consumers view television. Uh, today, cord cutting is the norm. I'm sure many of you on this webinar could attest to that. U.S. cable subscriptions have fallen below 67 million households, while we at the Trade Desk alone reach over 99 million households through, through our platform. And this, what this really means is that nearly half of U.S. households are now streaming only households. And the number is only going to continue to grow if you look at any of the projections uh, from the likes of, of eMarketer. Uh, and the shift to streaming is significantly altering the way advertisers and publishers interact and the legacy TV buying mechanisms uh, that I've referenced already. Viewership is extremely fragmented. The average US house watches TV on more than seven devices and across four streaming service subscriptions. Again, something you all at home, I'm sure can attest to. Uh, and the highly fragmented landscape makes it much more challenging to find your consumers, especially from single sources of inventory or one single publisher. Uh, the tent pole moments, the water cooler events, uh, those are fewer and far between as we're actually starting to finally see signs that the golden era of television is, is coming to an end or, or slowing. 
So in response to these consumer behavior trends, advertisers and publishers have had to shift their strategy. Uh, moving to the next slide, you'll see um, with fragmentation and the continued development of programmatic and ad tech, buyers are actually asking for more programmatic uh, and, and the publishers are responding to that. They're primed and ready to make more of their inventory available via programmatic pipes. Every major broadcaster today owns a streaming service and has launched an ad supported tier. There has been over 9% increase in that AVOD or ad supported video on demand viewers in 2023. And this is a pretty significant shift for publishers that were once only looking to gain subscriptions for ad free content, notably Netflix, Disney plus max have all shifted their position on ad supported over the last year or so. And now all have different tiers that are either ad supported or subscription based. Um, and if content is streamed, publishers are making that content available to buy programmatically, including things like live sports and events, movies, and basically anything else uh, that you can imagine, music videos, et cetera. This means programmatic CTV is available in all forms of buying. One thing I did want to note here is, is upfronts, which for a long time was off limits for anything but direct IOs. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with the upfronts, these are agreements between advertising agencies and publishers as a way to move large volume of inventory supply in advance of a broadcast year. Uh, in exchange, typically, you would get rate efficiency for that. Nearly three in 10 advertisers will allocate 20% of their upfront spend to CTV and programmatic terms within those upfronts, meaning can I transact programmatically, are the norm in those agreements today. And I'd venture to guess that by the time we sit here at the end of this year after fourth quarter, that a lot of these stats will already be out of date. But I think importantly as well, CTV is not just for upfronts. Uh, as I stated before, content, if it's streamed, publishers are making it available to buy programmatically and publishers are continuously partnering with vendors like the Trade Desk to ensure that buyers have ubiquitous access to supply. Disney has stated publicly that by the end of 2024, they plan to execute half of their addressable inventory via automated tactics. And that is not just for upfronts. So we have the inventory there and we have access. How are marketers reacting to that? Well, what we've seen at the trade desk is that marketers of all shapes and sizes are getting ahead of the curve and shifting more to programmatic CTV. We see this directly in the interactions that we have with brands and agencies. Independent agencies, DTC brands, local brands are all investing today in CTV as the rise of streaming has allowed for silos to break down. And notably within CTV as well, agencies and brands have also recognized the power of decision media. When we talk about decision media at the trade desk, we're talking about private marketplace deals or open market, not programmatic guaranteed, which looks and feels a lot like an IO, but decision media really allows a marketer to capture real tangible benefits of programmatic by allowing for more real-time decisioning and optimization. Um, regardless of how, how you look at it, decision media, programmatic guaranteed, publisher, advertiser, marketer, between the consumer trends, the response of the pubs and the willingness of advertisers to embrace and pro programmatic, it's fair to say that CTV is no longer a costly or hard place for advertisers to get into. So let's move on to our next myth, um, which is local advertising means geo-targeting. And what we're really trying to capture and understand here uh, is that traditionally when a buyer thinks about how to reach local audiences, uh, a, a traditional TV first approach is to think about broad metrics or tactics. So basically, can I target a demo within a DMA or with a, within a day part? And this is because in traditional TV, there really isn't a much more sophisticated way to target and reach audiences at a local level. And while geo-targeting is still a really effective way for buyers to reach audiences and consumers, DTV is also going to allow for more sophisticated means to reach audiences. Uh, and that's because CTV, as I stated earlier, is driven by digital technologies. So CTV allows for buyers to target one-to-one -one at a customer or household level in real time based upon different types of goals or objectives. Um, in the last section we're going to do, we're going to talk more about how we can connect goals and objectives to CTV, CTV campaigns. But now let's just start with, with the audience piece, right? How does CTV targeting work and what can it mean for you, the marketer, trying to buy at the local level? So data targeting and audience household mapping, uh, it's a really meaty topic that I don't want to spend too much time on here, but for the purposes of this uh, myth busting, I thought it would be helpful to at least show this slide and discuss it briefly. Um, 
at a very high level, there are many digital touch points that each of us has during any given day. Um, and what platforms like the Trade Desk are able to do is take all of those digital touch points, match them to different types of identity signals, and connect individuals to households and devices. From there, the Trade Desk and others in the space can map households or individuals to different types of audiences or personas. And just to note here, everything is done in a privacy and data compliant manner. Nothing is, is personally identifiable, but rather the technology looks at devices, IP addresses, or other forms of data to make these connections. And what we're really doing is getting a better understanding of the people who are watching CTV or premium content, mapping those to actionable audience segments, and driving more robust targeting op options outside of just geotargeting. So in programmatic CTV, you can move beyond geography and time and start to tailor your strategies to data sets that meet specific goals and objectives. This next slide highlights many of the different targeting options that can help advertisers deliver relevant messaging to consumers. I'm gonna spend time on a few of these different options that I believe are effective for local targeting. The first one I wanna touch on is first party data. Um, what all first party data is, is, is data your company has collected directly from your audience. Think about that as loyal customers, site visitors, or social media followers. Uh, at the Trade Desk, we believe that all marketers should have a first party data strategy. Uh, and in fact, publishers should have a strategy to match where they're building rela relationships directly with their consumers. But at the end of the day, first party data is your most valuable audience uh, because you, again, already have that direct relationship with it, with that customer. And you can do a lot with first party data, in including using these audiences as a seed to model off of and find more like consumers in platforms like the Trade Desk. Linear TV data targeting is another one I want to touch on. In this scenario, um, automated content recognition or ACR is built into smart TVs or other devices and basically tracks what people watch. Uh, this is generally done through an opt-in mechanism. So again, everything meets privacy standards, but this data can then be used to action on and applied at all stages of programmatic CTV buying. And many marketers use this data to target viewers uh, based on whether or not they saw your ad on traditional linear TV. So it's really marrying those linear, linear TV campaigns and planning with connected TV as well. Uh, but really, again, at the end of the day, this is just another option that allows you to take better data on consumers and localized markets and marry that to premium content. The last one I want to touch on is omni-channel retargeting, which simply put here is the ability to retarget CTV viewers across other devices in the household. Uh, and while I know this is a session focused on CTV, the Trade Desk, like many other players in the space, uh, is an omni-channel DSP. So you can easily take data and insights from your CTV campaign and apply that to other channels like web display, in-app, and more. Uh, regardless, again, of what type of strategy or data capability you settle on, when you think about your local strategy, you can think beyond geotargeting. Uh, so with that, let's move on to the last myth here, and I'm going to take a quick sip of water. No problem. Love it. <laughs> so the last myth that we have here is that CTV is only for brand awareness. Uh, and again, want to quickly level set here. When we say brand awareness, we're talking about the ability to reach mass audiences and create familiarity with your brand or product. Uh, and the reason that I think people associate CTV with brand awareness is because brand awareness is most associated with traditional TV advertising. Uh, but that doesn't mean it has to be the only outcome for CTV. Uh, while we know there is some complexity in CTV, uh, hopefully a lot of which we've been able to dispel with our myths today, uh, the bottom line is that connected TV is still much more measurable than linear. Uh, and as a channel, it can be used for more than just upper funnel branding and awareness campaigns. With CTV, you can connect your campaign to direct business outcomes. Uh, this slide has a quick basic view of the marketing funnel. Uh, and as we move down the funnel here, uh, you can see how different types of CTV campaigns can relate to specific business objectives. And then ultimately how we can track and measure those that those campaigns are successful. Uh, more on measurement in a couple slides, but let's talk through a couple scenarios here on this slide. If you, the marketer, are looking for reach and awareness, again, CTV is a great platform for that, you are likely to consider things like incremental reach and frequency overlap. CTV has the ability to track and measure success against those outcomes, um, and then, again, provide a closed loop of measurement to decide whether it works or not. For interesting consideration, you're likely to consider brand lift. 
inferred brand intent and foot traffic. Same scenario here. CTV is going to give you the ability to track and measure success, potentially then by also incorporating an omni-channel approach, which I referenced in the last slide. Uh, and on the final end of the spectrum, if you're looking at conversion and sales, you're likely to be considering things like online and offline actions and conversion lift. And with CTV, you can drive towards those business outcomes and then run closed loop measurements uh, studies from retail partners to determine if you are actually driving those sales. When you think beyond brand awareness for CTV and you start to think about driving different business outcomes and stages within the funnel, you also then need to think about different and unique KPIs. So on the next slide, programmatic CTV is gonna allow you to better understand every aspect of your campaign and move beyond metrics like impressions, viewability rate, and eCPM. Those, those metrics are KPIs that have really been standard uh, for a long time. As you see here, CTV has the ability to support the tracking and measurement of true digital metrics, unlike traditional linear. Um, all the marketers are thinking about direct re revenue impact in one way or another, whether it's at the top of the funnel or down lower on, on the funnel itself. And expanding the KPIs that you use to judge success helps you to make a more sophisticated approach to delivering and measuring results. Um, and lastly, how do we know all this works, right? So CTV and programmatic CTV also provides the ability to measure success of those business outcomes, KPIs, and the brand goals through innovative CTV measurement solutions. Uh, on the next slide, what you'll see is that regardless of what you're looking for, there are proprietary and third-party solutions that can help you to define what success looks like, and help directly measure whether or not your campaigns are successful. At the Trade Desk, we have direct integrations with many different measurement vendors. So there's a variety of choice and ability to be flexible as you set up different types of campaigns. So on this last myth that CTV is only for brand awareness, uh, I would say that while CTV is certainly an extremely effective and strong tool for reach and awareness, it's not the only thing you should be considering when you were setting up and defining CES for a programmatic CTV campaign. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Aaron. Awesome. Thanks, Charlie. And yeah, I know the foot traffic for a lot of the net assertive customers um, and being able to track that through the campaigns that we run with the trade desk has been huge to close that attribution loop. And that's one thing that we're seeing um, as an awesome conversion metric there. And before we close this out, I do want to share a very cool capability that we have at NetSertive in partnership with the trade desk. We've integrated with them, and this actually dovetails um, with what Charlie was sharing about using CTV campaigns to drive multiple business outcomes. So whether that's brand awareness, um, lead gen, or conversion. And so there's a capability that we've developed that allows for the centralized deployment of a localized CTV or any video campaign. Um, and what localized CTV or localized video means is that we can have a corporate marketing team run a campaign with a single or multiple corporate videos being served across premium, premium content. And then there's also a dynamic overlay that's inserted on top of it that drives a viewer to the closest retail or service location that's based off of their IP address. So you can see in this uh, kind of visual example, there's a beautifully produced video for Rebath. And then if you were a viewer in San Antonio, for example, you can see that closest location. So your local Rebath website, phone number, you could include the address um, to that nearest location to the viewer. So a lot of marketers love this because it provides the best of both worlds that brand awareness piece plus a local call to action. So you're able to use the power of a really premium video ad and showcase um, the power of that brand yet still drive a locally relevant message and have a seamless local user experience at the same time. So again, a very cool capability that we have um, with integrations with the Trade Desk. And if anyone's interested in learning more or how other brands are using uh, CTV in the space, let us know. We'd be happy to share more on that. And we did get a few questions. There's one I'll probably throw in um, and answer the rest after this. Um, but one question that I had too, Charlie, was 
How would you recommend a marketer think about the difference between connected TV advertising and OTT or general programmatic as well? So if a marketer had an awesome video ad, like what are the differences to consider when you're thinking about video everywhere in an omnichannel way versus that premium in the living room experience? Are there any like tidbits you could share differences of how to think about that the right way? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I think a good a good starting point uh, for any of these conversations or, um, you know, evaluations that you're doing is is starting by the business outcomes that you're trying to drive. Um, and, and then starting there, even when you are going to set up a campaign in the Trade Desk platform, like that's sort of what comes first and foremost is, is what is the outcome that you're trying to, to drive and what are you trying to accomplish with that goal? Um, and then from there, you can start to, to, to pick apart, I think, the different pieces, the platforms, the inventory, uh, the pricing behind some of that. Um, you know, sometimes pricing is going to be a very large consideration and, and OTT might be more effective because it does deliver across different, different devices than just uh, the connected TV or the biggest screen in the house. So um, my recommendation would, would be to start with the business outcome that you're thinking about. Um, think about the creative, as as you just mentioned as well. Where is this creative going to resonate the most? Is it going to be on the big screen, or am I looking to take a tangible action that needs to happen on a phone or or a a, a desktop computer? Um, and then ask those questions to uh, to your vendors. Right. Uh, be really clear on what's available, what the pricing is. Um, and, and how you can actually transact on that. Is programmatic available for all of these, which we, we believe it it mostly should be, but there can always be exceptions to that rule. So just sort of having that checklist that you go through, uh, I think will set you up for success. And then um, that's the beauty of programmatic as well, is that you can test and learn and make decisions in real time and, and optimize from there. So if something's not working or you're seeing more success on say a connected TV device versus a web display, you move more of your budget to that, uh, to that spot. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things to consider, but I think just sort of distilling it, going back to basics, making yourself a checklist, going through it, you, you can be set up for success pretty easily. Yeah. makes sense. Always start with the end in mind. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again, Charlie, for joining us. It was so great having you on and thanks everyone who joined live. We'll be sending out the slides in the recording and following up with any other questions that were popped in. And like I said, if you want to talk digital marketing um, or CTV advertising, hit us up and hope everyone has an awesome rest of the day. Thank you, Aaron.